this part of my presentation, I, I will explain it to you about the uh, NMR spectra of ethanol. What information do we derive from the NMR spectra of any molecule? And finally, we will conclude this by studying the applications of NMR spectroscope. Myself, Mamta Sethi. To read about these topics in details, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing, the link to which is given in the description box. Uh, so let's understand that, uh, you know, how an NMR spectrum looks like. So this was the first ever spectrum which was recorded using NMR spectrophotometer, the NMR spectra of ethanol molecule. Now this spectra is just like a storehouse of information because understanding this spectra we can learn many concepts uh, of NMR spectroscopy. So as we can see that there are this is your ethanol molecule which is CH3, CH2, OH. We all are well versed with the structure of this ethanol molecule. Now, this is a proton NMR spectra of ethanol molecule. The first information that this spectra gives us about the number of signals. As we can very clearly see that there are three signals, one, two and three. Three signals which are present in the NMR spectrum signifies that how many types of protons depending upon the chemical nature of the proton we divide them into different types so these protons uh, there are three types of proton methyl protons and then ch2 and then there is this hydroxyl protons so three types of protons are there which give rise to three signals which are present in this spectrum now the second information that we get from here is about the chemical shift. So chemical shift as we have understood in part one of this presentation is dependent on the chemical environment right. So uh, we can see here that as I explained that suppose this is this we consider so from right to left the delta scale the delta value is increasing this side delta value is increasing. So that means uh, the methyl protons delta value is least for uh, CH2 protons intermediate value of delta And highest value of delta is observed for hydroxyl protons. So we can clearly see here that the hydroxyl proton, right, it is connected to an electronegative element. Oxygen is present over here. Now oxygen being electronegative, you know, it will withdraw the electron density uh, away from the proton. So we have lesser electron density which is surrounding the proton. Lesser electron density means lesser induced magnetic field. If the induced magnetic field is lesser, then uh, you know the strength of the magnetic field which has to be uh, you know given to this uh, proton in order to show absorption will be what? It will be almost same as the strength of the external magnetic field. So it requires lesser magnetic field. Lesser magnetic field that means it is getting de-shielded. We have understood the phenomena of shielding and de-shielding. So the proton uh, to conclude, we can say that the protons which are connected to electronegative elements are getting de-shielded. De-shielded, downfield and high delta value. Remember this always this, uh, you know, the sequence. De-shielding, downfield and high delta value. So highest value of the chemical shift will be observed for this hydroxyl protons. Now, 
these uh, methyl protons of course uh, they have uh, highest electron density in uh, the, the surroundings therefore they are shielded compared to hydroxyl protons and uh, CH2 proton they are shielded and therefore shielded means upfield and therefore they have low delta value and this comes in between the two. The third information that we can derive from the NMR spectra of this ethanol is about the area under these curves. Right? The area under these curves means uh, area under the signal. So this we can very clearly see that the ratio of the areas under these curves is 1 is to 2 is to 3. So we can clearly see that the area under this curve is what? It is higher than the area under this curve and this is higher than the area under the curve which is due to hydroxyl protons. So area under the curve basically gives us the information about the number of protons which are giving rise to that signal because this signal is due to three protons you know there are three protons which are three NMR active nuclei so three protons are giving rise to this signal so the area under this curve is going to be three times the area under the curve which is due to only one proton and this is because of the presence of two nuclei so that is why the ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 3. So we can basically you know get an idea from the area under the curve that how many protons are giving rise to this signal and finally we also get to know the information about the neighboring nuclei. Direct nuclear information is given by the area under the curve but the information about the neighboring nuclei is provided by the splitting pattern. As we can closely see that there are three peaks. So this is uh, you know one broad peak but uh, a high resolution spectra of ethanol which is shown here in this figure clearly shows that there are three peaks. So this is known as a splitting pattern in NMR spectroscopy. This splitting is you know due to the neighboring nuclei which is uh, which are present in this molecule. So we can see here how many neighboring protons this methyl group has. It has two neighboring nuclei. So the number of signals follows this rule n plus 1 rule which is called n plus 1 rule which says that if there are two nuclei let's say which are present in the neighboring of these methyl protons then how many uh, you know uh, peak in how many uh, lines it the peak will split n2 n is 2 so 2 plus 1 that is it is going to show a triplet so we call this as a triplet so if it is a triplet, it is certainly due to two neighboring nuclei. So we can judge if we are getting a triplet, that means there are two protons which are present on the neighboring carbon atom. Similarly, we can correlate the uh, splitting pattern of this, uh, you know, carbon atom with the number of neighboring nuclei. So in the neighboring carbon, you have three uh, nuclei which are present. Therefore, this signal, the, stick, the protons of this particular carbon will show a quartet because 3 plus 1 following n plus 1 rule they will show uh, 4 peaks in its uh, spectrum but we can see here that the signal due to hydroxyl proton is a singlet. Now this does not mean that there is uh, you know no proton on the neighboring carbon it has a different reason that the proton which is present on the uh, oxygen which is uh, you know connected to the oxygen this is known as hydroxyl proton this is acidic in nature. Acidic in nature means it can split as H plus ion and therefore it can get exchanged very quickly it is not residing on this oxygen 
for uh, the whole time it is getting, getting very frequently exchanged with the neighboring molecule and therefore it does not stay on the oxygen atom for the enough time uh, so that its signal can be recorded by the NMR spectrophotometer and it gives as a separate signal. Therefore, until you know we freeze this uh, exchange of nuclei, the splitting is not generally observed in case of acidic protons. So, I think uh, it is quite clear this uh, the whole uh, you know NMR talks about uh, the different type of nuclei which are present in a molecule. So, understanding all these points I think it will help us to characterize the NMR spectrum of any other organic compound. So, uh, this MRI is a very very uh, you know powerful non-invasive technique which is used to uh, take the images of uh, the tissues which are present inside our body. They are, it is equally used for uh, diagnosis and even the monitoring of a treatment which is given to a patient. So, how uh, this MRI scan you know works? So, as we can uh, you know see in this picture that this is the picture of an uh, MRI scanning machine in which you can see that the patient is uh, you know kept inside a, a you know a cell where uh, the strong magnetic uh, field the strong magnets are present over here these strong magnets are again let's go back to the principle of NMR spectroscopy the strong magnets are required for the alignment of these magnetic nuclei so we all know that inside our body uh, most of the you know um, the, the biological uh, molecules which are present in our body they are having hydrogens so protons which are NMR active they are present in our uh, body biological molecules. So, these protons gets aligned uh, in the presence of these strong magnets. So, all these protons are aligned right in the presence and then comes you know then there is this radio frequency coil. So, then after these uh, you know the uh, protons all the protons which are present in inside our body they align themselves in the direction of the magnetic field the radio frequency coil is switched on the source of radio frequency radiation is switched on. Now once this is switched on all the protons I mean not all but some of the protons will jump from lower energy state that is from alpha spin state to beta spin state. Now they are in the excited state the moment they are in the excited state the source of radio frequency is switched off and the nuclei are allowed to uh, you know fall down or come down to the ground state. The time which is required for uh, the nuclei which are present in the excited state to come back to the ground state is different for different nuclei. Now uh, this is recorded as a signal and based on you know the time scale the time that it requires it is related the time that is required for the spin flipping for the molecules in the excited state to come down to the ground state is uh, different different for healthy and uh, the uh, diseased cells. So therefore on the basis of uh, the time scales and the strength of the magnetic field at which these signals are absorbed we can have a close look at the uh, structural changes which are taking place inside our body and the doctors are able to diagnose where the problem lies. So, this was uh, you know one of the most important uh, application of NMR spectroscopy in the field of medicine and other applications of course which are done on a regular basis are uh, your characterization of the molecule. So in uh, part 2 of uh, my lecture which is uh, NMR spectroscopy 
we have understood about the uh, you know the idea of uh, chemical shift the phenomena of shielding de-shielding and what information we can derive from the NMR spectrum of uh, a molecule and finally we concluded this session with the uh, you know with the applications of NMR spectroscopy. To read about these topics in details you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing the link to which is given in the description box. If you like my video please like subscribe and share Press the bell icon for future notification. Thank you. Without the permission of the copyright holder.